Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Are you glad to be in church today? I'm glad you're here, too, and the online welcome. We're so glad you're here. As we continue a series called Refresh, my passion, my prayer for you as we kick off this new year is that we would really have a, an, a refresh that comes from the inside, that God would refresh our soul, He would refresh our mind and our body so that we can live out this year, not even just this year, but our future in a way like never before. And, and I hope it's been encouragement to you. Last week, Martha did a phenomenal job. Doesn't she always do a great job <laughs> teaching the Word? So powerful. And then uh, I'll conclude this series next week. We'll be talking next week about how to re- refresh your vision. How do you know vision is important in your life? And so we're talking about how, to, how you can refresh your vision. Then I'll share with you the vision uh, a refreshed vision that God has given to us here at C3. And we are in day 15 of 21 days of prayer and fasting. Come on, how many of you are thankful we're at day 15, right? If you're new to C3 or that you're a guest with us today, we have we kicked off the year. We gave God the, the first and the best of our year by seeking Him through prayer and fasting. The Bible says that some things you will only know through prayer and fasting, and so we combine those two. In fact, if you combine prayer, if you give God first in prayer, fasting, and giving as you kick off the year, uh, even in your life, then that's where the power comes from. Jesus even talks about that when you give, when you pray, when you fast. And so we're doing that this year, and so we're concluding. If, in fact, if you haven't joined us, you can join us for the next week. We, we will conclude this fast on Saturday, the uh, 23rd, and at 5 p.m. right here, we're going to have a big finale on day 21. Whether you were part of all 21 days or you only did it for one day, come and join us on day 21. We all get to celebrate. How many of you know if, you, if you're on the, the Super Bowl championship team, which I'm not sure who's going to win, who, who thinks the uh, Chiefs are going to win? I don't know. Anyways, how many of you know the guy that who sits on the bench who maybe plays one minute throughout the season, he gets a, he gets a Super Bowl ring as well, right? as well as Mahomes. So they all, get, they all get a ring, right? And I'm just prophesying the Chiefs will probably win. But so uh, definitely not the Steelers, they're out. But anyway, so uh, I'm sorry about that. I know you just, just we'll pray for you at the end of the service. Um, so, uh, but anyways, we're going to have a powerful night of worship. Come and join us 5 p.m. right here in the worship center this Saturday uh, our worship team has been working so hard. Uh, we're going to be, many of the songs we're going to do are, are going to be uh, some of the newer songs that our team has been writing. And I'll share a short deal, and we're going to have just a powerful time. We're going to actually allow room for the Holy Spirit to just kind of move in a big way as we conclude. There's nothing like getting together on day 21 after praying and fasting for 21 days. I'm just telling you, it'll be a whole nother level. All right. So, um, Today I want to honor, uh, we have, um, some of you know that we started C3 22 years ago, 1998, with about 50 people at the Cleveland Elementary School. And the church began to grow, and, and, uh, and you know, we started reaching more people. People started bringing their friends, and they started, their lives were changed. And we had no staff back then, no building, no property, um, but a lot of faith. And, uh, and so... Uh, this uh, sweet woman came to me, young lady, came to me and said, uh, it looks like you need some help. And because I had no staff and, and I said, well, yeah, I do. But, you know, we're not hiring anybody right now. I can't, I can't even I can't we can't afford to hire any staff. She said, well, I, 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 you don't have to pay me. I just want to serve. I was like, oh, wow, cool. I can I can afford that. So we uh, we got some little a little rent, uh, office space behind the uh, off exit 312 behind the Hampton Inn the little office space there that we got that God blessed us with which that alone was a miracle story how we got that office space upfitted and and so she volunteered and the church continued to grow and I said you know we probably should pay you a little bit well that was uh, uh, that was 20 years ago over 20 years ago and Miss Pat Mason is retiring this week yeah I know. And uh, but she's not going anywhere. And her husband Paul, some of you mean, most of you know Paul. His mouth is a little bit bigger than Pat's. <laughs> and uh, they were two, by the way. They were they were the first two that we that were saved and baptized here at C three. Yeah. 
And I, I told Paul the only mistake I made was I didn't hold him under the water long enough when I baptized him. I should have, should have held him under there a little bit longer because his mouth didn't get baptized. No, no, just kidding. But anyway, so uh, we love Paul and Pat. And so I just thought it would be okay. I, how many of you know we should honor the first staff member ever hired? So can you guys come up here? Paul and Pat Mason, we love you. Love you, Pat. Love you, Paul. You guys are awesome. We got some flowers here, of course. They're for Paul, but Pat, you can have them too. And, uh, and of course, you know, we, as a staff, we celebrated this week, you know. Uh, they're not going anywhere. I told them they're a staff emeritus. They are here for life, full staff privileges, uh, but they, she is retiring, and so um, we love you guys. We're so thankful for all that you, thanks for coming alongside when you saw this pastor struggling to try to handle everything, and, and uh, you've, you've been so faithful for over 20 years, and we know that the, our, your greatest days are ahead. This isn't the end of anything, it's just the beginning of a new season, so we love you, and Paul came, to, they both moved down here from Maine, Paul was crippled, couldn't couldn't hardly walk, and the doctor said he'd be in a wheelchair, and God healed you multiple times, didn't Mar- Martha, can you give them a microphone if you want to s- share something? You might want to sit down. This might take a second. <laughs> See, I don't know if I have any words or not, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, as Pastor Matt said, uh, we came down here in desperation because I couldn't deal with the main winners anymore. And my wife had an opportunity to work here. I didn't even want to, wasn't thinking about church. I wasn't saved. Uh, didn't want to go to church. She kept trying to get me to go, but I, I fought her on it, you know, tooth and nail. And then one day, we were just riding down Cleveland Road, and I saw this sign, Cleveland Church. It was just opening. And I go, I thought, well, you know what? I think she's too snotty to go to a school. So I says, hey, let's go there. Of course, she said, okay. <laughs> so I was bound to go. So I went, and I'll tell you, I've been here ever since. I haven't left. Every Sunday since. And it's been phenomenal. Awesome. Pat, do you want to share anything? I just want to say that you're honoring me, but it's been an honor to serve you and Martha and your yes. family in this church. So thank you. <laughs> also, I, I feel the same way. I want you to know you have a great pastors with Pastor Matt and Martha. They, they're so loyal. They've been here. And to see that their vision has not changed. They have the same vision as when we started years and years ago. And uh, that, that's, that's it right there. I mean, some people change along the way and they give in to things, but their vision's the same. They just want to see all people that are unsaved, saved. They, they want to bring people to Christ. And if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be here right now, so. Awesome. One more time, give it up for Paul and Pat. You guys are awesome. Flowers. You're welcome. Love you guys. So, so special. Well, today we're going to talk about how to refresh your relationships. And uh, this past week, uh, every week is just like, Holy Spirit, we have a series kind of planned. You know, we're trying to kind of stay ahead of the game, obviously, and trying to plan ahead the best we can. But every week, I'm just like, Holy Spirit, what do you want our people to hear this week, and so the sermon I had prepared to pl- to share er- initially earlier this week, I told the team I said I'm going in a completely different direction, and uh, so we're going to talk today about how to refresh your relationships. How many of you guys need some refreshing in your relationships? Anybody besides me? How you know 2020 ha- ha- was not kind to relationships and marriages and families, right? It was it was a challenge, and, it, and in many ways it was a it was an opportunity for, for maybe some things that were under the surface to be exposed, to kind of come to the surface so you could deal with things that need to be dealt with uh, to, to really flourish in your relationship, right? And, and it wouldn't have come to the surface uh, apart from the, some of the shutdown and stuff like that. And so God loves to do our Romans 8.28. So we're going to talk about 
relationships. We've already talked about our relationship with God as we kicked off the series. How to refresh means that we must repent and return. That we, when we repent and turn to God, Acts says, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of, can we say it together? Refreshing may come from the Lord. That's what we're going to experience Saturday night. We experience today, but Saturday night at our night of worship, a refreshing of the soul. When you're spending time in his presence, when you repent and return to God, that's where there is refreshing in our soul. So as we talk about refresh relationships, our passion here at C3, as Paul just mentioned a moment ago, has never changed. And our vision from the beginning has been to provide real hope for what? Real people in a real world. And so that's been our passion from the beginning. And we accomplish that uh, through four different ways. And our passion is to help you, number one, to know God, then to find freedom, discover your purpose, and then make a difference. Those four things. Now, Jesus is all you need to know God as your personal Savior. Jesus died on the cross. He rose from the grave. Certainly other people can be involved in leading you to Jesus, but it's Christ alone. Salvation is by faith alone in Jesus Christ. It's not Jesus and good works or Jesus and anything. It is, it is by grace you are saved. Period. If good works got us to heaven, none of us would have a chance. <laughs> right? So, because you can't be good enough to go to a perfect place. So only perfect things are allowed in heaven, so none of us would go. So it was Jesus had to come and die for our sins. But to find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference, we need each other. Only the first one can you do with just you and Jesus. And people who say, I don't need a church, I don't need to be a part of a church family, well, you're missing out on three-fourths of what God wants to do in your life. And maybe even more than three, four. Like you're, you're, miss, you're going to heaven, but that's about it, right? It's like you're missing out on the abundant life that God has for you here. To find freedom, which we do through connect groups. To discover your purpose, which we, we encourage you to take next steps and discover your purpose. And then to make a difference by being a part of our dream team. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 8. If you have your Bible, you can look there with me. I'd encourage you to take notes today. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 8 in the NIV says, There was a man all alone. Everybody say, all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. So obviously this man had wealth. He had things that the world can give you, and you would think, man, if I just, if I just know God and make a lot of money, then I'll be happy. No, no, there's more to it than just having Christ is your Savior. He wants us to do life with each other. This man was all alone, but he was not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked, and why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless a miserable business. Verse 9, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one To help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. How can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So two is better than one. And three is better than two. There's something about having relationships with each other that we can encourage each other. We can lift each other up. He says, if either of them falls down, how many of you know all of us are gonna we're gonna have ups and downs, right? We're gonna we're gonna make mistakes and we're gonna we're gonna fall on our face. Sometimes life does that to us, sometimes other people do that to us, sometimes we do it ourselves. But it says, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. I always think of you guys remember the 1980s TV show A Team, Mr. T. Remember Mr. T, big old Mr. T? He was my hero. I wanted to be Mr. T when I grew up. He said, I pity the fool. I pity the fool. I always think of that in my mind. It pops in my head. I pity the fool who has no one to pick him up, right? So how do we refresh our relationships? If you're taking notes, write this down. Number one, very simple. Don't do life alone. Don't do life alone. I've tried that. It doesn't work. 
don't do life alone. God created us to do life together. Genesis 1 says it is good, it is not good for a man to be to be alone. After he created all that he did, he said it is good, but then when he created man, he said it is not good for man to be alone. We are better together. So what are some hindrances to refreshing our relationships? What are some hindrances to building healthy, life-giving relationships? I think maybe our personality, some of us some of you are like me. I'm a mild introvert. I'm not extreme, but I'm a mild introvert. I, I get refueled by being by myself. If I'm with a lot of people for a long period of time, uh, I will get drained and I'll try to find an escape to where I can be by myself. You know, and, and, and so, so I'm refueled by being alone. Some of you are refueled. Martha's refueled by being around people. Like the longer she's around people, she comes home and she's bouncing off the walls. She's like staying up till midnight. I'm like, can we go to bed? Like I'm exhausted, right? <laughs> Because she's been around people all day. During the shutdown, she was like wiped out. Whenever we were in our homes, remember that? Remember that? I know. It was, and, and we couldn't go anywhere. It was like, and, and she was like, I just have to be around people. And Zoom didn't cut it for her. I like online didn't cut it. Like she, I got to be around flesh and blood people. I'm like, I'm pretty good. I'm good. So <laughs> let's keep this thing going for a while. Let's just keep it shut down. I'm good. Got my Zoom call. But she's not personality, don't let your personality hinder you. I've let that do that. I've let that happen before. I'm like, you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of good by myself. I'm kind of good at home. I don't, I don't really need anybody else, but that was a lie from the devil. How about fear? Fear of the unknown. Maybe even as you think about, we talk about being in a connect group and being in a small group. It's like, it's this fear that overcomes you. Like somehow the, you, all these weird images pop up in your head. And maybe you had some, some negative experiences in the past in church life. And, and you're kind of picturing you're going you're gonna to go to this home of people that you don't know. And there's going to be people there that you don't know. And, and you get there and they're going to they're gonna initiate you. And, and they're going to put you in the center and sit you in a chair. And they're going to put people all around you. And they're, they're going to ask you to confess all of your sins, and, and then they're going to bring out a cross and do an exorcism and cast demons out of you. It's like, I don't want to be a part of a connect group. That's something weird's going to happen. How many you know that does not happen at connect groups? And if it does, please let me know. We will, we will cancel you right now. Right? Canceled. How about past experiences? Maybe you've had some bad, you've gotten burned by church. You've been, you got burned by somebody. Somebody and that pain that you experienced, it wasn't just about you, it was about the other person. The enemy was up to something much greater. The devil was trying to keep you from being in relationships again. Don't let him do that. How about busyness? Just getting so busy. Calendar is full. Just busy, busy, busy. You know, our world and our culture glorifies busyness. How are you doing? I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Praise the Lord, I'm busy, busy, busy. Just so important. So powerful, just too busy. Don't let busyness keep you from experiencing the abundant life and the life-giving relationships that would fill a void in your life like nothing else. I encourage you to get your schedule in order. What is it going to take? What is something you'd have to remove from your schedule, remove from your calendar, that is not as essential as you may think it is so that you can allow room for God? Psalm tells us to teach me to number my days. Every day is important. I think also another hindrance is just unaware. Just unaware. They, you just do not know. You've never been in a group. You don't know what it's going to be like. You don't know what it's like to be a part of a dream team or to be a part of a church family. You're just unaware. You, you don't even realize what you're missing out on. How many of you have a testimony like, you know, you know what it's like life to do life alone, and you thought that was pretty good, but then you did life with other believers through a dream team or a connect group and a church family. You're like, wow, all this time I was missing out on this. Just because you were unaware. The truth is we are all going through stuff, and we need each other. I believe the, greatest, the enemy's greatest strategy is to keep us isolated. C.S. Lewis once said, friendship is born... At the moment when one person says to another, what, you too? I thought I was the only one. See, none of us are perfect. All of us have issues. You have issues. The pers person sitting next to you has issues. 
Those online, you have issues. Your pastor has issues. We all have issues. And if you think you don't have an issue, that is your issue. <laughs> Romans 7.15 says, Paul says, and you know, Paul was pretty amazing. He says, I don't understand what I do. For what I want to do, I don't do. But what I hate, I do. How many of you can relate to Paul? The things you want to do, you know God wants you to do, you don't do. And the things you know he, God doesn't want you to do, you end up doing them. So we need each other to help us. So what should we do? We should invest in important relationships. I'd encourage you to make a list of who are your important relationships. Colossians 2 verse 19 says, The whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows as God causes it to grow. Nothing stays where you left it. Nothing stays where you left it. Every great relationship happens on purpose, not by accident. There is no, you know, you just get married and then you just kind of coast the rest of the time. There is no relationship that just happens. You, you have to be intentional. And we have to work on it. You think, well, I got her to marry me. And then I'll just leave it there. Well, how do you know it's going to deteriorate? Adam and Eve had it made. They're in the garden. They have no worries. They have no debt. They have no clothes. How do you know it's a good day in the garden? But then somebody said Eve ate them at a house and home. Didn't anyway, so as a result, sin entered the world. And so we we were born sinners because of that. And so we want to come alongside and help you, whether you're married or not, and but we have a, as you just saw, we have a an opportunity to help you. I'm so excited about how many of you love Jimmy Evans. Man, what incredible resources. He's been here multiple times. Well, uh, we're going to be hosting here at C3, as you heard, a marriage conference. There's limited space. It will sell out quickly, probably by the end of today or tomorrow. It will sell out. But if you would like to, you think, hey, this would be an opportunity for uh, my spouse and I to really uh, to, to, to be a part of this and to, and to grow. What a great Valentine's gift. I can't think of a great Valentine. Martha, and by the way, that's my Valentine's gift to you. Right. Uh, February 12th and 13th, Valentine's weekend. Nothing. Will, so we have to be intentional. So you can either prepare or you can repair. If you prepare, then you work on it. You go to counseling before you need it. You ask for help before you need it. Hey, if I or when I may encounter this, when I have children or when I have this, can you give me some advice? Because you're a little bit farther down the road. We can either prepare or we can, on the other side, repair. How do you know preparing is a lot better than repairing and a lot less expensive? This conference is going to cost, what, 50 bucks or something? How do you know if you combine counseling, medication, whatever else people try to do to solve their problems? It's pretty expensive. How about we restore my broken relationships? You want to refresh your relationships? Restore your broken relationships. What are some relationships that may have been fractured, that have been broken? Romans 12, 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with who? Everyone. Say everyone. See, only God can heal and restore broken relationships. But it requires humility, and it requires forgiveness. Here's a question. Who do you need to forgive today? Who do you need to forgive today? So I'm not going to forgive them. They don't deserve it. That's not the point. They may not deserve it, but you deserve it. You deserve to forgive them so that you don't live in bondage one more day. Because unforgiveness is like drinking poison, thinking that it's going to hurt the other person. The next thing is we must remove any toxic relationships. You want to refresh your relationships. Some, some of you have some toxic relationships in your life. And, and this is a good year to say, you know what, I need to put some distance between me and them. Every time you're around them, you're more negative. 
Every time you're around them, you're farther away from God. Every time you're around them, you're less involved in church. Every time you're around them, you just feel like you're drifting away. Some of you need to cut off some toxic relationships. Some of you may be dating somebody, and you know they're dragging you away. They may say, I'm a Christian. I go to church. They may say that. And and it may be true, but you know for a fact that they're dragging you away. It's worth cutting off that relationship and trusting God that he'll provide somebody better. Cut off toxic relationships. Toxic. You don't want toxins in your body, right? Why would we want toxins in our relationship? How about we detox some relationships? Proverbs 27, verse 19, A mirror reflects a man's face, but what he really is is shown by what kind of friends he chooses. Proverbs 13, 20, He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. You show me your five closest friends. I'm not saying that these toxic relationships still can't be in your life. Some of you, there's impossible. You know, they're like your family. It's like, how do I get rid of my brother? He's like, he's toxic. So, but, but who are your five closest friends that, that you, you're closest to, that you confide in? Make sure that they are not toxic. Because if you show me your five closest friends, I will show your future. You want to know what your future looks like? Just look at your five closest friends, and you will become like them. And then we must initiate some life-giving relationships. Initiate some life-giving relationships. We, what does life-giving mean? That's a, we like to use the phrase life-giving. It's to be re- having refueling relationships, encouraging relationships. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. I'm going to share with you a few stories of life change. Um, someone sent this testimony to me this week. They said, the lowest point in my life came last summer when I was holding a nine millimeter in my hand, contemplating my life's worth out of fear of not knowing the man looking back at me in the mirror. 27 years I spent more time pretending to be a character, pretending to be someone else as a professional wrestler. I traveled and entertained millions of people all around the world as that other person. At some point I became that someone and lost me. In those 27 years I used people had failed marriages, alienated friends and family, just to be this person. I even alienated God because I no longer believed in him. I refused any type of relationship with God, fully believing everything I had and did was because of me. To me, God and the Bible was nothing more than a myth. Then it got to a point where my parents, my brother, and the rest of my family no longer wanted to be around me. Everything came to a head this past summer. I made the decision to walk away from what I thought made me whole. I posted an emotional video message on social media and that what I didn't know then was my own cry for help, and God heard it. Within a few hours of that video, I received a message from Pastor Matt. Pastor Matt didn't know me personally, but saw my message and said I could reach out to him if I wanted to. So I did. When I talked to Pastor Matt, he invited me to a men's connect group. And in that meeting, something in me changed. Every man there treated me as an equal and didn't play off to the person of who I created myself to be. By the end of that night, the influence and aura of these men had my heart and soul ready to give my life back to the one that I had taken control from, back to God. That Sunday, I went to my first C3 church service, and the sermon spoke to my heart so so much that I collapsed on one of my connect group brothers as several of them surrounded me and prayed over me right there in the church. During my journey of finding God, learning the Bible, learning to pray, being in a connect group and going to church services, I can start to see God changing my life. All I had to do was give him control. With the help of my pastor and the small group, I've learned to stop looking horizontally for my answers and look vertically because God's way will always be better than my way. I've seen with the power of prayer, the power of a church, and being surrounded by men of God can do. And God cannot take the wheel unless you give him the keys. Isn't that a powerful testimony, you guys?
I think CW is sitting right there. CW? Love you, buddy. So what does it look like when you're in a relationship with a church family? Hebrews 10, 25. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. There's something powerful about meeting together. And I think the enemy, I'm not saying the enemy caused the whole shutdown and pandemic, certainly, but I don't know. I'll find out when I get to heaven. I have a lot of questions like you do. But I do know that the devil would use that or try to use that to keep the church from meeting together. And I feel for those who are online that because of, out of necessity, you, you, you can't be in person. My heart breaks for you. And I know, and I just encourage you to keep pressing in through the online services. And don't give up meeting together through online. Um, that's the season that we're in. So there's, lean into that. But whether it's online or in person, there's nothing like meeting together. If you have not been a part, if you're not a part of our church, let me encourage you to to take next steps. You hear about that often, but next steps is your next step, right? If you want to accomplish those three things, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. And even to know God, but is to be a part of next steps. That happens the first Sunday, every first Sunday of every month in 2021 at 1030 in our conference center. And you can let us know on the connect card. As you just saw, a relationship with a small group, a relationship with a connect group is the next type of relationships that we need to initiate. And today, you can sign up for a connect group. Right now, today, as you heard earlier, go to c3church.com slash groups, or just go to c3church.com and click on connect, click on connect groups, and you'll see all the group options, men's groups, women's groups, student groups. Uh, co-ed groups, all different types of groups to be a part of. Uh, Let me encourage you uh, and let me challenge you as your pastor. I'm not asking you to do this the rest of your life. I'm just saying for the next 12 weeks, for 12 weeks, would you give God 12 weeks? So you know I can do that. I can give God 12 weeks to to do life with some other people. Well, my schedule's busy. I travel a lot. Just, Just jump in. And if you have a crazy schedule, then we'll figure that out, right? Your group will help you. But today, don't let the devil steal your joy. Today, say, Lord, I'm going to give you 12 weeks. The next 12 weeks are yours, and I'm going to be in a connect group and sign up today. Amen, everybody? And I guarantee you will not regret it. A UCLA study said that we need 8 to 10 meaningful touches every day to be healthy. We need eight to ten meaningful touches. How many of the devil is all in this? He's trying to keep us from touching each other and being in, doing life with each other. I'm just telling you. But our victory is in Jesus. We are overcomers in Jesus' name. I'm not going to live in fear. And then you need to have a relationship with the team. You need to be a part of the dream team here at C3. Teamwork makes the... Dream work. I'm so thankful for our dream team. I'm telling you what, especially during these 21 days, they're up here praying at 7 a.m. or online here in person. Their cafes cranking out some amazing Daniel Fast smoothies and drinks. And shout out to the Warrior smoothie. Come on, somebody. Changed my life. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 12. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A quarter of three strands is not quickly broken. Here's another uh, story I'm going to share. Uh, some obviously some powerful stories today. This person serves on the dream team, on our, our serve teams and our hosting team. He says, before serving on the dream team, it was great coming to church and worshiping and listening to the message. But serving on the dream team has given me more hope, more purpose, and more of a chance of meeting others and hopefully spreading the light of Jesus. Serving on the dream team is more than just something I feel obligated to do. It is something I look forward to do every week. I look forward to seeing everyone and seeing new faces every week. I see serving on the dream team as something that God has given me the opportunity to do and has also given me the opportunity to reach out to others by just being there to greet them and make them feel welcome. 
I personally feel that the dream team is an awesome thing to experience and be on because I have I have been to other churches that I did not feel welcome. Just like the Bible says not to hide, hide the light of Jesus inside of you, I feel that serving on the dream team gives me an opportunity to show others the light of Jesus in whatever capacity that may be. It may be, it has made me a much more outgoing person and is a very enjoyable experience. Serving on a team is fun. And then lastly, we must have a relationship with God. I'm going to end where I began. If we're going to live a a life that's refreshed, we must understand that we have to go all in. Even Jesus says in Revelation, I'd rather you be hot or cold, because if you're lukewarm, if you're in the middle, I want to throw you up out of my mouth. Jesus came to give us a relationship. He loves you. He died on the cross for your sins. In 1 Peter chapter 3, it tells us that Christ also suffered. He died once for the sins of all of us guilty sinners, although he himself was innocent of any sin at the time, that he might bring us safely home to God. Everybody say safely home to God. Come on, some of you today, I just need to say welcome home. Welcome home to a relationship with God. Welcome home to your church family. Welcome home to the the friends that will help you flourish in your life. God says, safely home to God. But though his body died, his spirit lived on. I have one more story I want to share with you. It's one thing to hear the word. How many know there's power in the testimony? Even the Bible says that we overcome the enemy by the, by the, uh, the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So we're kicking the devil's tail right now, I'm just telling you. He hates it when I share this stuff. My wife and I started coming to C3 after we moved back to Clayton from Florida in the spring of 2017. At that time, we just wanted to blend in, hear the good word, and get out of the door. We were lukewarm churchgoers the first year. Although we really enjoyed the music and the service every Sunday, being lukewarm just wasn't doing it for us. And I know it certainly wasn't doing anything for Jesus. One Sunday, Pastor Matt spoke about the one-year all-in challenge, meaning take next steps, baptism, serve, tithe, and get connected, commit to do everything C3 offers. My wife and I decided that day we needed to go all in. For us, our family, and most importantly, our Savior. We did it all, and what a difference it has made in our lives. I was somewhat hesitant to join a connect group at first because I knew to go all in, I would need to share some stuff. We all have challenges and problems. I have many and was worried about sharing or being judged. And when I joined a connect group, I learned that was far from the truth. C3 is a big church, but when you get truly connected, it feels like a small family. I'm so blessed to have the guys in my connect group to share life with, discuss ideas, share praises, and to lean on. It's something I've never had before. Now I'm leaning in even more. I'm going to co-lead a connect group. For someone that has always thought he would just be fine without others, I found that in my experience, I was missing out. Jesus didn't do life alone when he walked this earth, and he doesn't want us to either. Take the one-year challenge. You won't regret it. Go all in and get connected. Isn't that a great story, you guys? So powerful. Well, maybe you're here today and you say, you know what? That's me. I'm not even sure that I'm a Christian. I'm not sure that Jesus is my Savior and Lord. I want to give you an opportunity right now in this room, online, wherever you may be, to pray and know for sure that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior. Will you pray with me? Just pray this out loud, believing that he died on the cross and he rose from the grave. Say, dear God, I realize that I've sinned. And I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross and for rising from the grave. Come into my heart and save me. Thank you for giving me eternal and abundant life. Help me to live for you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, 
And everybody said, amen. Amen. Come on, can we celebrate all those who made the decision to follow Jesus? Hey, thanks for joining us today. And if you made a decision to follow Christ or would like to take your next steps, if you will text C3 Space Connect to 474747, we will be sure and get you all the information you need. Now, let me encourage you to share this message and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more messages. Hey, listen, we pray you guys have a blessed week.